What if everyone felt at home when they stepped into our space, wherever that might be? Uh, the gospel and hospitality are nearly synonymous. Helping people feel at home in places maybe they've never even yet been is exactly what God invites us to because it's what he's done for us. Today we explore how the gospel is hospitality and how we embody that well with others. So I encourage you, invite somebody to watch along with you, download the notes to follow along. Here we go. Grab your Bibles, I'd love for you to go to Luke chapter 14. Uh, we're gonna land there here in just a minute. Luke is one of the accounts of Jesus' life and we're gonna look at uh, another aspect or another arena of our lives that God is inviting us to order in his direction. If you don't have a Bible, it's no problem. Just scan the QR code that's on the screen. You can also scan a QR that's on the back of the seat if you have any trouble with the screen. There's two links at the top when you get there. Number one is an outline that you can follow with everything that I'm gonna talk about for the next little bit including all the scripture we'll read, or you can click on the Bible app and download that. It's not ours, it's free. I don't even think it has advertisements. It's a great app, so you can always have a Bible if you don't have one already. Today we're gonna explore something that is actually really fairly well known in Las Vegas. We've been looking across every arena of our lives and saying, God, how do we point our lives in your direction? Not on accident, not intermittently, not randomly, but on purpose. We've been saying we wanna be a people who are unhurried on purpose. We're slowing down to ask, is our life really going where we hoped it would go? And most importantly for all of us who are followers of Jesus, is our life actually arranged to head toward Jesus, to experience the joy he has in mind for us and to honor him the way that he deserves? Uh, and so that's the thing we've been asking across every arena of life. And today we're gonna uh, dip into one that I've been thinking about and holding on to for a long time that our city knows well it's hospitality. Anybody know anything about hospitality in this town? Listen, we are a hospitality town. Think about the last time you showed up somewhere and you just felt like it was set up just for you. Like you hadn't even arrived, but when you got there, it felt like they'd been waiting on you, thinking, thinking about you, planning for you, anticipating what you might be interested, what you might need, what you might enjoy, and you just stepped into that space. Or think maybe it's not a space like a hotel room or a, or a restaurant or an event center. Maybe it's actually just someone's presence. Like you stepped into their presence and you felt at home because of the way they thought of you, considered you, welcomed you, and just invited you close. I've got a few friends who are just like this. They just embody hospitality. While hospitality is an industry, and while service is like another way to describe that, I love Will Gadara in uh, Unreasonable Hospitality. He says that service is like black and white and hospitality is in color. It like brings all of the life and personality of providing for someone else to life. We get this in the hospitality industry, that hospitality is all about making, treating a stranger as a friend. Someone we didn't yet know becomes family. And while, uh, listen, while hospitality may be a lot of people in this room or certainly in this city's business, I just wanna say unapologetically that hospitality is actually God's character. God is a God of welcome. He is a God of hospitality. So some of you who are followers of Jesus, you've sensed this, you've known this, and so as we tell some of the story, I encourage you to call to mind the ways that God has arranged space for you, welcomed you close, thought of you ahead of time, anticipated what you need, and welcomed you in like family, because we were experiencing that. But some of you have never pointed your life toward Jesus, and you haven't experienced that, and you're, you're wondering what it's gonna be like. You've walked in maybe literally to a new place today and be like, am I gonna be okay here? You made it, lightning didn't strike you, okay? So you're fine. The deal is God has space for you. He is a God of welcome, and I hope we all see that today. Because the God of welcome also invites us to be people of welcome. You'll see as we go along. If you haven't found your way to Luke 14, I've bought you all the time that I can, okay? <laughs> But first, a quote from a book that I wanna set right alongside and I just wanna highly recommend. A woman named Rosaria Butterfield, whose who's, who's story of life is just so powerful. Her, her voice is so prophetic, meaning it just speaks God's character so quickly. She wrote a book called The Gospel Comes with a House Key. And I just encourage, it is not an easy read, but it is a beautiful book. I would encourage you to pick it up. She opens in the preface saying this that radically ordinary hospitality are those who live it, see strangers as neighbors, 
and neighbors as family of God. People who live this, they recoil at reducing a person to a category or a label. They recoil at reducing a person to a category or a label. Show of hands, who loves being labeled and categorized? Anyone, anyone, anyone? No, cool, right? No, we would recoil at that thought. That's not the kind of welcome we ever want to receive or offer. People with radically ordinary hospitality mindset, they see God's image reflected in the eyes of every human being on earth. Would you take a moment uh, and risk some awkwardness and just look around the room and make awkward eye contact with as many people as possible? I called it awkward because when you do it awkward on purpose, it's less awkward. <laughs> Listen, be willing to offer someone, just acknowledge their humanity by making eye contact and, and offering them the same gift. People who live with a gospel mindset and look at others as much as possible the way that God looks at us sees humanity, not, not category. We see God's image reflected in people. And while it may be like wounded, scarred, flawed, that's gonna be true for every single one of us. No perfect people allowed. Can I get a yep real quick? Listen, no perfect people. But all humanity worthy of some space to be invited into. When we start to arrange our lives in this way, even if you don't know Jesus, maybe you work in the hospitality industry, when we begin to create space around us that people step into and feel at home, we're reflecting God whether we meant to or not because it's who he is. In Luke chapter 14, you'll see this. I, I wanna show you. We're gonna pick it up in verse 15 here. What we're seeing in this story is Jesus has been invited to a banquet. Someone has hosted him in their home along with several other people. And they have a conversation. You should read the whole thing in Luke chapter 14. Tell somebody Luke 14 so you don't forget Read it this week, don't just listen to what I read, that's lame, that's like the appetizer only, you gotta get the entree, Luke 14, okay? Get in there and read it, and you'll see Jesus at this banquet having a powerful interaction with people. And while he's probably one of the guests of honor, they have this extended conversation, and one of the guys pipes up, he's a follower of God, a person who is of a Jewish descent, was sitting with him, he says this in verse 15, hearing this, a man sitting at the table with Jesus exclaimed, what a blessing it will be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. For all of history prior to Jesus' arrival, the people of God, the Israel people, the Hebrew people have been anticipating God making everything right. And one of the primary ways that they imagined that was as a banquet, where everyone had space, their needs were provided for, it was full of laughter and joy and savoring good food. It was a constant picture of what God had in mind. The same is often true when we sit at really great meals with really great people, we get just a taste of that. Jesus replied though to this person, he says, let me tell you a story. I love Jesus, often instead of offering definitions, he offers a story. And so I just wanna invite you into the story and just figure out which characters you relate to and what each character reminds you of. It's called a parable, it's not like a literal event that happened, but Jesus is trying to capture the essence of God's character and what the kingdom of God is like in a simple story. So feel your way through this story, here it is. Verse 16, Jesus replied with this story. A man prepared a great feast and he sent out many invitations. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guests, come, the banquet's ready. But they all began making excuses. One said, I, I just bought a field and I gotta go inspect it, please excuse me. Another said, I just bought five pairs of oxen and I wanna try them out, please excuse me. Another one said, I have a wife, so ex I can't come. <laughs> Do with that what you will. <laughs> Means something different in the first century, but just roll with it. You catching this? Feast arranged, preparations made, invitations sent out, and those who had initially said yes suddenly are better dealing than one who hosts them. The servant returned and told the master what he had said. His master was furious and said, go quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. After the servant had done this, he reported, there's still room for more. 
Like I did that. We went all through everywhere. We invited everybody in, but there's, there's still more room at this banquet that you've arranged. And so his master said, go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. And none of those who I first invited will get even the smallest taste of my banquet. Just imagine your way into the story. Jesus sitting with someone who had said how great it will be to be in the kingdom of God and Jesus tells a story about people who had better things to do and missed out in a widening circle of unexpected guests invited in. I don't know what uh, like kind of people we surround ourselves with, but in the first century, if you were to host a banquet like this, you would often invite people of the same status in society as you, primarily, and then as many people of higher status as you could, you would invite them in in order to elevate your status. I know that never happens in our lifetime, but it happened in Jesus' time. It was rare that you would ever reach down the social ladder and invite people in. Now, in the first century, homes were open and so people could wander their way in and there was a provision in a separate room allowed for those people. It would have shocked his guests to hear this story and particularly to tell this kind of story in someone else's home. Are are you picking up maybe where the characters fit? Consider in your mind, who's this host of a party Jesus is talking about? Who, Who does that describe? The initial people who were invited in, who were way too hurried in their lives to make time for this amazing table and setting that had been set for them. These outcasts who were always walked past in the streets and in the alleys on a regular basis, who either couldn't or were not invited into any better spaces than those, or even outside the city, those people who had made mistakes that they weren't even welcome inside the town walls and maybe didn't feel comfortable there anyway. It's a story of a generous invitation hurried lives who missed the good the host had in mind for them and a guest list that went to a shocking extent. Are you picking up what Jesus is putting down yet? These kind of stories need savored, they need retold, they need read in multiple translations. I hope you'll come back to Luke 14, tell somebody Luke 14 and just say, God, what do you wanna say to me in the story? We're gonna explore a little bit today, but I, I, there's no way we'll get to all of it. At one level, this story is from Jesus to a Jewish man. Now, the history of the people of God was that the people who had known God and he had rescued, he had promised them, listen, I'm gonna turn the world right side up. They were the expected guests, but even in Jesus' time, those who should have known and anticipated who Jesus would be regularly missed the point, and they missed out, caught up in too many other things. And so the story of Jesus became, it wasn't just gonna be, you would not just become a Jew to become a a follower of Jesus. All Gentiles, the word for all people who are non-Jews, were also invited in. So at one level, Jesus was just telling a shocking story about who God loved, and it was wider than they thought. It's worth asking at this point, for any of us who have encountered God along the way in the story of our life, I just wanna ask a simple question. Are we hurried in missing out on what God has been inviting us to? We called this series Unhurried on Purpose. Some of us have seen and experienced some of the good that God has invited into our lives, but like we just get, we're just doing life and we're doing life, we're doing life and then squirrel and we're just off on our own way. Maybe we just need to slow down again and remember God has invited us into good. God, what did you have in mind? I got my plans, but I'll set those down for what you have in mind. We're gonna get there in a few minutes. The people of God who had known him for a long time, they were missing the point. They were saying, listen, how great will it be one day in the banquet of the kingdom of God? And Jesus is saying, I'm right here. I I am the kingdom among you. I'm the king arrived, and this is the space, and this is the kind of space. And let me just tell you, the space is bigger than you thought it was. The people invited reach way farther than you ever would have anticipated. He was trying, saying, you're missing it, and it's right in front of you. Don't wait for then, it's here. On another level, certainly this is a story of God's character. I said this earlier, God's character is hospitality. He is a God of welcome. It was the story of Jesus is like, let me tell you about this banquet you're anticipating and who's invited. It reaches not just into the town for all the people you forgot to think about who fit a category you don't identify with, He reaches outside the town for people who burned all their bridges and cut all of their ties and find themselves totally isolated and alone. He says, my banquet has more space 
than you ever could have imagined. And isn't that good news, everyone in here? And followers of Jesus, can we just say, isn't that our story? That when we burned our bridges with him, when we ran our way as far as we could, when life, when we hit rock bottom and started digging, that's when God said, hey, there's a better way and I have good in mind for you. Like in a nutshell, this is our story. We did it without him for a long time and we encountered him and he is such a good and loving king. We would never want a moment without him and ever since he's been putting our story back together piece by piece by piece. Do you have a story like that? Followers of Jesus, can I just get some kind of response that that's your story? Anybody with me? That's our story, right? We, I don't know who you identified with in the story. Maybe you're the hurried person distracted, missing the good that God has. But most of us, when we back up to God like entering into our world and us pointing our life toward him, we were the people in the streets, on the edge. We were the people who had messed stuff up, broke stuff down, and he just met us in our mess and invited us to a banquet we couldn't imagine. And we are just so deeply grateful. And so if you, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah all right, come on, thank you. <laughs> I must not be making it easy. But I'm just telling you, this is why we sing loudly, sometimes badly, but loudly. This is why we do this crazy thing in a little bit called communion. It's our story. Like this is, God has made space for us and the banquet only gets better and then it lasts forever and it's only banquet. Like this is the hope that we have. It is so, and so listen, if you're just trying to find your way toward Jesus and you're wondering why all these people do the things that they do, it's because God made space for us when we didn't know where space could ever be. A better space than we ever could have imagined for us because he's a God of welcome. His character is hospitality. So I just wanna say, if you've ever wondered if there's space for you, I just gotta imagine in Jesus' story, there were people all over town and outside the town who for their whole lives heard banquets like this going on and wondered, would there ever be a space for me in a place like that? I guess I missed my chance. I guess I'm not good enough. I guess that's not gonna be for me. I just wanna say, literally from the middle of the story, I wanna speak from the servant's language and say, there is still room for more. There is space for you. God has good in mind for you. He's an amazing host. He will not judge your attire on the way in. He will not rehearse your failure in front of everyone else. You will find yourself stepping into a family of broken people being put back together by one who is capable, loving, and ultimately hospitable. Step in any way you can in the direction of Jesus. There is still room. He is one who wants everyone in the banquet. It's why he sent his servant out. How many times, do you remember? Twice. Three, you're right, three. <laughs> Some people blew him off, but then Jesus, then the, the, king sent, or the host sends out twice. Say, I will not tolerate empty seats at my banquet. I will not leave anyone uninvited. There is space because he is a God of welcome. All right, turn to somebody next to you and say, welcome. <laughs> Listen, this is his character. Before I go any farther, I just wanna back up and I just wanna look at hospitality in, a, in one bit larger frame, really specifically. Hospitality is, um, we experience it at the welcome stage, but a lot actually happens before that and it's all in the story. When people step into the banquet, that's not when everything began, is it? Have you ever planned a party? Anybody planned a party? Like, does it start when the party starts? Is that when it starts? Nope, starts way before that. We just recently had a birthday party for one of my kids, and so our house was crawling with teenagers, and the obscene amount of food required to feed teenagers for multiple hours, oh my goodness. So it was months ago we started imagining what would it look like? What date could it happen? What are we gonna have to purchase? What's gonna need to be prepared? Do we cook the food? Do we invite a taco guy? What are we gonna do? Oh my goodness, so much. And so let me just break down hospitality because I think it might help us appreciate what God has done for us and it's gonna invite us forward to become like him. Five quick steps. Number one, if you're gonna be hospitable, you've gotta imagine a space people wanna step into. What kind of party would really be great for a bunch of teenagers to step into and feel at home and welcome, especially when they come from different spheres of our son's life? How might they be at home and welcome and have what they need? Start to imagine and picture that kind of space. We step into spaces that feel like they've been waiting for us, but it's been months and weeks in the planning. That's what makes it so amazing. 
People spent all kinds of time preparing with energy and effort. I, listen, if you wanna hear a whiner, I wanna tell you about Friday night and Saturday morning of my life this weekend, okay? The amount of yard work and things that haven't been cleaned for months, and I'm like, why are we cleaning this? They're just gonna mess it up anyway, and they don't even know. Like, I would love just a few minutes of cathartic whining if you want, because we prepared like crazy, but we were also excited, anticipating what it might look for our backyard to crawl with teenagers. It takes preparation to set up this kind of space. Great hospitality begins with an imagination, moves on to preparation, and there's gotta be some kind of provision, can, uh, because here's the thing, hosting a party costs money, can I get an amen? amen. Listen, it costs money, it's our, our city's built on it, we get it. If you wanna set a space, it's gonna cost someone something, and it's worth it. It was so worth it to watch all these teenagers interact and find a space, and, and just it, move from one thing to the next, so good. Of course then, uh, once you've imagined the space, prepared it, provided for it, you gotta make the invitation, right? And so you send the invites out. In our story, there was some rejection. There's two rounds of invites. I won't go into it in the first century, but here's the thing. An invitation is a bit of a risk. It's like passing the note across a second grade classroom, do you like me, check yes or no. <laughs> and maybe no, right? right? Sometimes it's no. Hospitality's risky. We don't always know, we don't always guess right, but it's an invitation. And then finally, when people say yes, there is a space that people get to step into, and you gotta show up well in that space, and excited, welcoming in, so that people right from the start know this space was made for you. And when hospitality's done right, someone who's never been known before feels like you've been waiting for them your whole life. That we were anticipating you before we ever even knew you. Can you just back up and walk that into your relationship with God? That God imagined a space, prepared it, paid for it at cost, invited you in, and followers of Jesus, have you not experienced a welcome that feels custom made for you? But we gotta go one more level if we're really gonna be followers of Jesus. We've been ordering our lives around this particular direction that the scripture points us to. Not just being a follower of Jesus, but making followers, inviting people to follow, preparing, planning, imagining those around us becoming followers of Jesus. This whole journey of hospitality is something that we as followers of Jesus embody everywhere we go. And so I just wanna show it to you in this story. Luke chapter, what was it again? What are you gonna read this week? Luke what? That's right, 14, thanks, I forgot, I didn't. Luke 14, there's so many characters in the story. We talked about all those on the marginalized, the excluded, the forgotten, the abandoned, all being invited in. We talked about the host who set the table. We talked uh, about the people who were too busy, but there were some other characters in the story. Do you remember uh, there was a servant in the story? What was the servant's role? Deliver the invitations. Maybe you read Luke 14 and remember that you aren't just one invited to the party, that once we've experienced God's presence, we become the servant, the one who announces the invitation, who says the table is set, there's space just for you, and you got, I know you may, maybe you don't feel like you belong, but you belong, I, you, you gotta come experience the belonging. Certainly we can find ourselves, especially followers of Jesus, as servants saying, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There's a space for you. In fact, um, if you think back to your encounter of God, I bet there was someone who was that for you. I bet you could name them someone who invited you in that direction. We have the privilege now as followers of Jesus of being the one who delivered the invitation. But there's, a, there's one more character we can relate to if you really read Luke 14 carefully. You might think his role is already assigned because certainly Jesus in the story applied the role of host to himself, but I just wanna tell you, we're not just servants. When Jesus uh, tells a story about his character, he is always telling us something about who he is and of course who God is. The scripture says Jesus was the perfect representation. If you wanna see who God is, look at Jesus. So Jesus is always telling us about who he is and by extension who God is as a whole, his character. This is why we know God is a God of welcome because Jesus is one who created space around him for everyone, any sort of person. But when Jesus is telling us about his character, he's not just telling us what he's like, he's inviting us to become like him. He was like in, in kind of a 
around the, like the side door kind of way, telling this person, how great will it be to be one who's in the banquet of God? That'll be so good to attend the banquet in the kingdom of God. And Jesus is saying, listen, I hope you'll slow down and accept the invitation. I hope you find your place and know that you're a guest. But by the way, the extension, the, uh, the invitations go farther than you think. You're not only a deliverer of the invitation, you're a host of the party. When you read Luke 14, imagine in what ways are we becoming not just servants who announce the invitation, but hosts who set the table. This is who we are, followers of Jesus. We're ones who set a table where anyone and everyone is welcome, where everyone's humanity and worth, regardless of their history, are acknowledged because that's exactly what Jesus did for us. It may literally be in the table in our homes, and sometimes it ought to be. But for some, that's literally impossible. It doesn't have to be there. I'd love to tell you about the end of a bar in a coffee shop where everyone picked up their drinks, and I got there early just to set up this kind of space that anyone who came through there, their day would get better, including the baristas making their drinks. Drop off my favorite donuts for the baristas. I'm so stoked for you guys. Thanks so much for doing what you're doing. And everyone who arrived to get a drink, I was uh, anticipating, preparing, or like praying, watching for people, welcoming them in, inviting them over to hang with me while they're waiting for their drinks so that five minutes of their day would look totally different. We can be hospitable, not just in spaces like we've been invited to, but any space we show up in. We get to be not just servants, but hosts. We are the kind of people who offer others what we've been offered. We hand others what we've been handed. And as we follow Jesus, we become like him. If he's a God of welcome, we should be people of, guess what? Welcome, marked by hospitality. In fact, this is what Jesus said right before the story. So when you read Luke chapter 14, have I drilled it into our minds enough yet? Luke chapter 14, you'll see that right before this, he's not telling a hypothetical story. He's giving instruction. In verse 12, he says this, it isn't enough to say. It's, oh, oh, sorry, this is N.T. Wright. It isn't enough to say that we ourselves are people dragged in from the country lanes to our surprise to enjoy God's party. N.T. Wright, a scholar thinking about this story, is like, listen, it's not enough that we ourselves are dragged in from the country lanes to our surprise or to enjoy God's party. That may be true, but here's the thing. I love this. Party guests are then expected to become party hosts in their turn. Party guests are then expected to become party hosts in their turn. And so for all of us, I just want you to begin imagining where in your life might you be a party host where people step in and experience the welcome of God. As I said a moment ago, Jesus gave this direction and he said, the circle should be bigger than you could imagine. Too many of us invite people who are just like us or people who can help us into our spaces, leaving no room for those who have been marginalized, excluded, discarded, disadvantaged, or anything along the way. Jesus is very clear, he says, listen, the kind of people who are like me are like this. He said, he turned to the host. He says, do this, when you put on a luncheon or a banquet, he said, don't invite your friends, brothers, relatives, and rich neighbors. Can I just remind you, he's sitting at a banquet where a guy had inv invited his relatives and rich neighbors, okay? Jesus was not always PC. He says, don't do that, because they'll always invite you back, and that will be your only reward. And make no mistake, it is a reward. It's not wrong for us to invite our family and our friends and our close people together. This is a lonely city in a lonely world where we need people to walk deeply with. He said, but that can't characterize our whole lives. There's gotta be space where we do something else. Yes, there's a reward in that moment, but he says more than that. He says, instead, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. These were the excluded, marginalized, and forgotten people of their time. Who are the excluded, marginalized, forgotten people of our time? Who are the people that are categorized and labeled in our time? Jesus would say, those are the people we should be inviting in to the space in our coffee shop, to our cubicle at work, to our space in the gym, to our home and our table for dinner. Because then at the resurrection of the righteous, God will reward you for inviting those who could not repay you. Is there any better word to describe what Jesus did for us? Then you will be rewarded for inviting those who could not repay you. Followers of Jesus, that's our story, isn't it? So listen, when we do this, we actually declare the story of God without even saying his name. 
We should say his name, but even before we do, we embody what he's done for us. This is what I'm inviting us to experience. How does the way we welcome people into our space declare what God is like because of the way we show up and because of the place waiting, prepared, paid for, and invited to them? And so listen, I I just wanna say, if we're really gonna be followers of Jesus, this is what he's like, and so this is what we should be like. He is a God of hospitality. It was his idea to begin with, and while we've built an industry on it, it's always been his character. And if we're gonna look more like him, our lives will grow in this direction. Some of you are like, I am so introverted, I hate everything you're saying. (laughs) Introverts, you know how to invite people into space. It just doesn't look flashy and in big crowds. I'll join you, I'll compete with you, I will win the introvert battle, okay? Like, we'll we'll just go toe to toe. God can, and listen, even if that's true, and even if your house is tiny, or you just live on someone's couch, there are spaces for you to create around you. And the God of the universe who put his spirit alive in you because of his son who died for you is capable of turning you into a hospitable person. Someone once, I once went to someone and I said, listen, this is just how I am, this is just how I am, I'm just like this, and he said, well, that's a pretty terrible theology of the Holy Spirit, and I was like, (laughs) Because the Spirit changes us to be like Jesus, and Jesus was hospitable, so all of us have a step, nobody's off the hook. And so let me give you just three quick steps that come right out of this story to grow in hospitality. Number one, If we're gonna grow in hospitality, all of us are gonna grow in hospitality. Turn to somebody and say, you're growing. You will not grow in comfort. It's gonna be risky. You're gonna have to pass the note, check yes or no, it's gonna happen. You're gonna fall on your, like we hosted a thing and invited some people in and I can't even tell you how many donuts we offered to gluten-free people. (laughs) You don't always get it right, people, but at least we tried. We're gonna grow in hospitality. Number one, widen the circle. Tell somebody widen the circle. I don't know how big your circle is, but followers of Jesus, I just wanna say, and and for anyone who's not, like you're not a follower of Jesus and you've watched the church from the outside, I just wanna confess and say this is true. Christians get in such tight huddles and enjoy someone, uh, like one another so much, there's no space for anybody new, fresh, or anything else to feel like anything but an outsider. And followers of Jesus, we need to do better. Yes, we cling to one another. Yes, we support one another. But we are a people who are not just about being disciples and surviving a world so different from us. We are a people embodying in the world the story that God has invited us to. And so you wanna get shoulder to shoulder? No problem, just face outward with your circle. Right, this is Red Rover, right? Just let them come your direction, scoop them up and put them in your line and don't let go. This is, we've gotta widen the circle. We gotta see people, if you have not encountered and invited someone in that makes you uncomfortable recently, we need to do better. If someone hasn't been so shocked at your invitation that out of their own insecurity said no, we haven't reached far enough. We gotta reach farther. In fact, a few weeks ago, we drew these relational maps of people we interact with. Make your map reach farther, watch, closer, walk slower, add people constantly that you are holding in God's presence and saying, God, if you give me the chance, I will show them who you are. This is the kind of people that we are. In fact, we're gonna do this as a church here uh, uh, later on this week. We're gonna just carve out some time that all together in all of our own spaces, we're gonna walk and ask God to do what only he can do. It's called a prayer walk, which makes it sound super spiritual. Let me just describe it for you. It's where you walk and pray. You're all trained. (laughs) All we do is we move through a space asking God to do what only he can do. We do that alongside people that we care about. We pick a corner of the map we drew just a couple of weeks ago where the places we go on a regular basis, but instead of showing up like we normally do, hurried and on our way, we show up slow, anticipating and inviting God. This is part of imagining hospitality in that space. It's part of like planning what it would look like to welcome people in, preparing ourselves and maybe them by God's help to meet in a powerful way so that at the right time we can invite them in and welcome them into a friendship at least and maybe one day into a friendship with Jesus. This is the kind of people that we are. I encourage you to block some time. We're just gonna do this and see what happens, see what God stirs up. Number two, not only are we gonna widen the circle, we're gonna clean up the calendar. Tell somebody, clean it up. Or 
right? Some moms did that real well. <laughs> clean it up, clean up the calendar. You can't be hospitable in a hurry. You can't welcome going fast. In fact, I love this, Rosaria Butterfield, I hope you grab her book. She said this, practical or practicing radically ordinary hospitality necessitates building margin time into the day. Somebody say margin. Look it up, most of us don't know what it is because we got productive lives where every moment is full. Mm -mm. A life characterized by margin, time where regular routines can be disrupted that are, but not destroyed. This margin stays open for God to fill up to take an older neighbor to the doctor, to babysit on the fly, to make room for family displaced, any number of things. It only happens with margin. If we don't have margin, we will not become more hospitable. So we gotta clean up the calendar, tell somebody clean it up. <laughs> and finally, this is gonna be everyone's favorite at the top of the hour. You've been waiting all day for this, I love it. Whew. Not only are we gonna widen the circle, encountering people we're not like and haven't spent a lot of time with, not only are are we gonna clean up the calendar and slow our lives down and let God fill it with whatever he wants? We're gonna make some room for him to do what only he can do. This is everybody's favorite, number three. We're gonna limit our lifestyle. It's like the most countercultural thing I've said all day. We're gonna limit our lifestyle. Our whole culture says spend every dollar you get and however many they'll let you borrow so that we can be comfort Comfortable, appear well, and make sure we always have the latest upgrade. Have we realized yet that that doesn't actually lead to joy? You know what leads to joy? Watching someone's face light up when they step into a space that you've imagined for them and maybe watch them come alive in Jesus. To do that, we gotta have margin. And so we limit our lifestyle. Rosaria Butterfield says it this way, living out radically ordinary hospitality leaves us with plenty to share, plenty of food, plenty of space, plenty of time, and yes, plenty of money, because we intentionally live below our means. When will there be a corner of our wallet full of money only to give away to others? When will we not be strapped and stressed working extra hours to make up for the money we shouldn't have spent for ourselves anyway? It's in this ordering of our lives for the best of life. We will not trip and stumble and roll downhill into the best kind of life. We need to order our lives this way. This is why we were talking about a rule of life. At the risk of like dragging this out too far, I just wanna say every week so far has led up to this week and next. Because here's the deal, we talked in the very first week, we talked about how we need to abide with God. It's when we rest with God that we remember the welcome he offered us that we can welcome others. It's when we sharpen our mind like we talked about in week two to remember we are not what we can acquire. We are not what we can accomplish. There is not satisfaction. Our life does not consist in the abundance of things, Jesus said. It's when we remember that that we can limit our lifestyle and have space to be hospitable. It's when we order our life to rest well that we have the emotional energy to really engage others with a priority and a welcome that says you matter, offering them uninterrupted, undistracted attention and listening, which might be the greatest commodity in our age. It's when we embody extraordinary prayer, holding up our relational maps before God, saying order like holy moments around me, God. It's when we pray and prepare. It's when we paid the cost ourselves that we can invite people into our space and into connection with God. Are you seeing how it all adds up? It's when we order our lives. I'm just telling you, your life will have eternal impact and people will come alive in ways they couldn't imagine and hopefully maybe even come alive in Jesus because of the welcome we offer people like Jesus offered us. And so I just wanna ask you, how will we order our lives toward gospel hospitality? We can be inspired, we can agree, we can even be convicted Nothing changes until we act. How 
Will we order our lives? What evening of the week will you just hold space for your neighbors? What 15 minutes in the morning will you hold sacred that's just for other people and not for hurry? What space will you step into with the intent to make it better that anyone, whether they realize it or not, experiencing, experiences something of gospel hospitality because you were there? How will we, or what could you build into the calendar or your finances? What kind of space will you make so that God can do what he wants, not just what we want in the moment? And of course, to make it real, how will you begin this week? What's one step you will take in the next seven days to just experiment with gospel hospitality as we've explored it today? I usually encourage people to sing the last song, but I'm gonna encourage you not to. Unless you mean what the words say. This, this song is actually a powerful prayer that we can offer God. Please don't do things around here that don't make sense or just don't just phone things in, okay? This song says, I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. Which I always love singing when it's thinking about God doing cool stuff in my life. I'm like happy to sing that. But today we're singing it with a hospitality mindset. Please, please don't, let's, let's not speak untrue things to God. God, I will make room for for you to do whatever you want to in the mindset of making space for people who need to experience his welcome. Uh, so this week, let's like savor and reflect on the hospitality that God has shown up as a God of welcome. And let's make some real plans this week and in the future. How will we make space in our calendar, in our budget, and in our lives to invite people in with a warm welcome? If we can support you any way along the way, we'd love to. Head over to canyonridge.org You'll find everything you need to know along with a way to get in touch with us. If this has been helpful to you, I encourage you, share it with a friend and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you soon.